Hey y'all, let's take a look at two things today. First is called monomial factoring. And uh, really when you see something like this and they tell you to factor, uh, if you ever get stuck, just go with what you can do and do what you can. So you can, if you want to pause and copy, you can. But let's take a look at this uh, a, uh, little expression here. And we know we can factor out a 4. We know we can also factor out an X, right? Once we factor that out, we have an A, we have an X, and then we have a Y, and that's it. That's the most we can factor out of that uh, expression, and then we just leave it like that. If you ever want to test your factoring, you can always multiply through and go 4X times AX. It's going to be 4, then A, then X squared. Got it. And then 4x times y is just 4xy, got it, you're done, you've done it right. Okay, same thing here, let's go ahead and factor this expression, and if you want to pause and copy, go ahead. Well, first off we need to do is take what number we can out of this. 4 and 6 should be pretty easy for you. That's going to be 2. And x squared and x to the first power, the rule is just pick the one that is the lesser or least uh, x point. So this is x to the first power. So that's what we'll factor out. We have p squared and then p to the fourth. We'll pick p to the second. Then k and k squared. Of course, we'll just pick a k. Once we've got that, then we're doing two division problems, basically. So it's this divided by that. What do we get? 4 divided by 2? Two, 2. x squared divided by x? x. p squared divided by p squared? 1. Then k divided by k, 1, no need to write 1 times 1 there, you're done. Just leave it like that. 6 divided by 2 is 3. Uh, let's see here. Let's go with uh, our x first. x divided by x is just 1, no need to write that. k squared divided by k is going to be k. p to the fourth divided by p squared will be p to the second. And again, you can always check your answers if you want, especially if it's a test or something like that, by just simply multiplying through and distributing the outside factor into whatever's inside this parentheses that you create. So there we go. All right, let's take a look at a third one. Three terms this time. But, you know, a piece of cake, just do, do the same exact thing we've always done. All right, and we know the number will be what? We can factor out. Two, right? All right, then we're going to have an x here. We have an x there and an x there. And the one that can be factored out of all three is x. And we have a y, y, and a y squared, and that has to be y because nothing else can be factored out of y. All right, well, let's do some division. 4 divided by 2 is 2. x squared divided by x is x. y divided by y is 1. No need to write times 1. 2xy divided by 2xy is 1. Don't write 0. Make sure you write something there because it's not going to be... I mean, anything divided by itself is just 1. All right? And then 10 divided by 2 is 5. x divided by x is 1. Y squared divided by Y is Y. And again, if you want to check, you can multiply back through and you should get the same exact answer that you start off with. Okay. All right. The second part of doing this is called, we're going to look at cancellation. Now, again, I want to remind you that the algebra stuff that you do, at some point somebody went, gee, this works with numbers uh, every single time. We'll just make it into an algebraic theorem. We can, we can just use it for X's and A's and Y's and so on. Um, and look at the top uh, fraction there. What can you do to cancel that? You could sit there and go, I'm going to multiply 137 times 14 and divide by wasted time. Because look, there's an 137 there and there, and the answer is 14. No need to do anything else other than that, right? But can you cancel the fives in this one? And the answer is no, right? If it, if it were this, 12 times 5 over 5, yeah, you could cancel that. Because 12 times 5 is 60. Divided by 5 is 12, which is what we say it is if we cancel. But 12 plus 5 is 17, and 5 is just 5. 17 divided by 5 is the actual correct answer. So if we go, oh, I'm going to cancel the 5s, we're saying that the answer is 12. The answer ain't 12. It's 17 divided by 5. So if there's a plus or a minus between two terms in a numerator or denominator, anywhere in a fraction, you cannot cancel those at all, only if they're being multiplied. And that's the rule. So, if it works for actual numbers, it'll work for this kind of stuff too. Which you can, if you want to uh, pause and copy all of these, you can. But look at the top one. We can cancel the tens, right? Because the 10 is being multiplied by the x plus 7, so those are gone. So the answer is just x plus 7. This one, what can we do? 
cancel the 19s, right? We can get, no, we can't cancel the 19s. Can't. I get you. Okay. That's a plus 19. You can't do anything with that. Nothing at all you can do. This, there's no reducing of any kind you can even do with this bottom fraction at all because the 19 is added to the 3a. You have to kind of clump it together and keep it together. Okay? So let's look at this first, um, this type. Can we cancel this as it is first? Can you cancel the x squared? The answer is no, you cannot because 6x cubed is being added to x squared, so you cannot cancel that. However, we can take a look at the two terms in the numerator and say, well, I mean, let's see if we can do something with it. We can factor out, which we can. Now, what can we factor out of 6x cubed plus x squared? And the answer is x squared, right? You can pull out an x squared. So you pull it out, and what are you left with here? You're left with a 6, and you're left with just an x plus, and then x squared divided by x squared is just 1, and then that's there, and then we do copy down the denominator, and lo and behold, look at there, there's an x squared, there's an x squared, yoink, they're done, and that's all we can do with it. Okay, that makes sense? All right, let's try another one. Same kind of thing. All right, can we cancel the x squareds? No, we cannot. Okay, they're at the one that's added to the top. So can we factor out anything in the numerator? Uh, no, we cannot. So this, there's nothing you can do with this except for stare at it, stare at it some more, serenade it with some of the most tender soft rock hits of the 1970s if you'd like to, if you're so interested. But other than that, there's nothing you can do with this. Can't cancel it, can't reduce it, can't do anything to it at all. Okay, all right. Let's look at the second part of the lesson today, which is a little bit of geometry. I'm, I'm going to make this very simple, simplified for you. We have done uh, this kind of stuff before, all right? The, the triangles that overlap each other. And if you remember, uh, first off, two angles means three angles, right? If two angles are congruent, that means the third angle is congruent. This little triangle is a similar tri to, triangle to the bigger triangle because this, they, you know, they share that top angle here. I'll just do it like this with three of them. This one is similar, but it's kind of wonky looking because it's kind of, you know, turned upside down there. But you can look at this uh, triangle on the left. I'll just redraw it. It looks like this and like that. And if you were to take this triangle here and kind of like rotate it all the way around, this would be a pathetic drawing. <laughs> Uh, this would be a similar triangle to the smaller one because this is here, this is there, this would now be the bottom side, this would be the right side, and this long side would be the left side, even though it doesn't look like that. But these are similar triangles because they have two angles that are the same. Also, the, well, the reason they're the same is because these are vertical angles, which will be by definition the same. Now, if you remember this drawing, remember what those uh, arrows mean. They mean that the lines are parallel. And you can just go ahead and remember the transversals we did several, I mean, many lessons ago, where we had a transversal. Here's like two parallel lines and a transversal cut across it. And it gave you all these angles that were the same and all this kind of thing. And then it, we could have two transversals. It would give you, you know, uh, let's say this is 3 over 10. And then this would be 6 over, and you could figure out what this is. That would be 20 because the ratios are the same. Same kind of thing happens here. This is just simply another way of saying this. You see those two similar triangles, the one that overlap? If it overlaps like that, that indicates to you, if these are, lines are parallel, then that means that this angle is the same as that angle. And that also means that, of course, they share this angle as well. And it also means that this angle is the same or congruent to this angle. So anytime you see that figure drawn like that, go ahead and treat these as similar triangles because that's what they are, okay? And I just drew over that. Let me erase here real quickly. And this is the same thing. If these two lines are parallel, well, we already know that this angle is the same as that angle because they're vertical angles. If this is parallel to this one, what happens is it's kind of similar to what the transversal did before in the, in the previous drawing. So you can flip this thing around if you want to, if you like to look at things like this, or just physically flip your book around. Do that if it helps you. And this will here will be a similar triangle to this triangle. You can go ahead and, and you know, make the ratios like we've done a jillion times before. So, all right. Okay, go ahead and try A, pause it, and give that a whirl and see what you get. 
Okay, well, the number we can get out of all three of these numbers is 2, obviously. The m squared, the m to the third, and the m squared, we can pull out an m squared. And x, x squared and x, we can only pull out an x. A y to the fifth, a y, and a y is just a y. That's all we can pull out of there. All right. So let's start dividing. Let's go to this one first. 8 divided by 2, 4. m squared divided by m squared, 1. No need to write times 1. x divided by x, also 1. y to the fifth divided by y to the first, y to the fourth. Done. There's a plus. 6 divided by 2, y divided by y, just 1. x squared divided by x is just x. m to the third divided by m to the second is m to the first. Minus. And 2 divided by 2 is 1. No need to write a 1. X divided by X, 1. Y divided by Y, 1. M squared divided by M squared, uh, 1. So you have four ones times each other. There it is. That's all there is to it. Make sure you write something to that last term. Don't just leave it blank. Oh, there's nothing there. There is something there. It takes a 1 to multiply this to get that. So make sure you put it there. Okay, pause it and try again. Okay, if you crossed out M squared and, and on the top and M squared on the bottom, you... It's time to go to your room, or do dishes, or run around, or do, punish yourself somehow. Force yourself to watch golf on TV for an hour. Okay, I'll, just, I'll pause it here while you watch golf for an hour. Okay, I'm assuming you paused it here. No, don't take the m squared and m squared and cancel them. You can't do that because they're at addition. You can, however, take the top and say, okay, well, out of those two terms, I can pull out an m squared. When you do that, you will get a 4, then an m to the third, then plus m squared divided by m squared is 1. And you can just uh, copy the denominator like it is. Then, looky there. There you go. Okay. That's it. Your final answer is 4m to the third plus 1. By the way, if you have a lot of time in your hands and you're not busy watching golf on TV, you can actually make up a number for m, like, I don't know, 2 or something. And go through all this rigmarole and, and you know plug it in there and see what you get as an answer. Then try the same thing in the same number with this, and you will you will get the same answer that you get if you do it right. So anyway, okay, let's go ahead and take a look at C. So pause it and try C. Okay, well this by definition tells you that these are, these are similar triangles. So let's go ahead and I always like to redraw these things. So what is that? Four, five, and then seven, and then I have another. Triangle here, that is just horrific. The left side will be 4 plus 3, that's going to be 7. This will be 5 plus x, and this will be y. So let's go ahead and find x first. Well, and again, don't forget, you can, you can take your choice of ratios. You could do left to left equals right to right. Or you could do left to right equals left to right. I'll just do that one for the heck of it, okay? So left to right equals left to right. All right, and then 4 times 5 plus x. I think we can do this without having to write it all out. 4 times 5 is 20. 4 times x is 4x. That equals 7 times 5. And then 4x will be 35 minus 20. So x is going to be 15 divided by 4. And there we go. And from the back of your book, it might, it might say 3.75 or something like that. Okay, well, uh, y is even easier because we don't have to mess with all this kind of thing. Let's go... I don't know. How about 4 to 7 equals 7 to y? We'll try that. 4 to 7 equals 7 to y. So 4y is 4y. 7 times 7 is 77. No, it's not. It's 49. Just checking to see if you're awake there. You awake? All right. This isn't golf, you know. Okay. All right. There you go. Let's try D and uh, pause it, and then we'll do that together in a sec. Okay, well, I, you know, again, I like to draw these things over, <laughs> so I hate looking at these things upside down, so you might have actually, you know, done something similar and flipped your book. Don't worry about drawing this perfectly. Just get it to where you can look at it and tell which side is which. Well, if you're flipping this all the way around, the N will be on this side. Then the, uh, excuse me, the 6 will turn into a 9 if you flip it. No, I'm just kidding. Don't do that. Okay, so the 6 is on top now. And if you flip this over, the 7 turns out to be on the bottom. Okay, so you know, I'm just going to get rid of that. So there are your similar triangles. It says find M and N. Well, let's just find M first. How about M to 4 is 6 to 7? 
All right, so m to the 4 is 6 to 7. So 7m equals 24. m is equal to 24 divided by 7. Or you could write 3.428571 for the repeating decimal, but you don't have to worry about that. 24 seventh is fine. Okay, let's try n. Well, I don't know. How about uh, 3 to 4 is n to 7? That works. 3 to 4 is n to 7. By the way, if you did 3 to n is 4 to, let's see, 4 to 7, that's okay because you're going left to left is bottom to bottom. Fine, nothing wrong with that at all. 4 times n equals 21. So n is equal to 21 over 4. And here we go. Follow what I was doing. Okay, hope you guys have a great day. See you next time. Good luck today with those problems.